Don't you just love the idea of meeting that special someone who comes into your life like a dream? With whom you can share all your dreams and spiritual journey with until the end? It's the deepest desire of a child of God who's come of age to meet the one that God has sent and approved as a partner for them to live the rest of their lives with. It isn't one of the easiest things to do though because you have to resist the emotional pull and mental influence of your flesh, tempting you to accept just about anyone into your life. Don't get me wrong, your emotions are not devilish. They can, however, be manipulated by the devil as they're connected to your flesh. To be driven by emotion to accept or reject things in your life will keep you in the place of limitation and instability. Why? Because emotions are inconsistent. However, to be led by the Spirit and Word of God is to place yourself on solid ground where your choices and decisions are driven by divine inspiration and foresight which will save you from future regret and damage. Dear friend, you may not know this, but just like Adam in Genesis 2.18, God does not want you to live alone without the help of the right partner. This means He wants you to be happily married, fulfilling your destiny with the spouse He gives you. Genesis 2.18 The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now, God's not going to allow you to just marry anyone you meet on the street or some social hub. God does not want you and the destiny He's prepared for you to be damaged by allowing you to marry just anyone. Rather, as Christians, there's a way to know who the right one is and who we shouldn't be with. Let me quickly share three things that will happen when you meet someone who's sent and approved by God as your spouse. 1. There will be confirmations. When someone who's approved to be your spouse comes into your life, God will give you confirmations. Listen, because God's not the author of confusion, He doesn't work just one party. Rather, He'll put confirmations of His will in both of you. The Bible says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a word is established. 2 Corinthians 13.1 This will be my third visit to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Matthew 18.16 But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. With confirmation, you have a reason to believe and hold on to God, more than by how you feel, but by what you believe He said. One of the things my pastor taught me about this is that when you meet that someone, you may feel is the one for you. As a child of God, you have the right to ask for confirmation. This is different from putting out fleece like Gideon did. This would be like saying, Lord, if he or she is the one, let them put on a blue shirt or a red scarf today. A fleece may be manipulated by the devil and you may be ensnared. However, the confirmations from God are usually threefold. A. Internal confirmations B. External confirmations and C. Eternal confirmations With internal confirmations, your peace will be intact, your emotions will gradually align, and you will have a strong conviction that this is the one for you. This also involves a sense of satisfaction with them because they'll meet your desires as a partner to a large extent. External confirmations are twofold. One will come from the person's own actions and reactions to you. This will not contradict what you are already sensing inside yourself, but rather confirm it, even without you two talking about it. They may not be the one if their actions aren't saying anything to prove that they want to be with you as a spouse. Secondly, God may use third parties, which may involve other spiritual people or leaders, as well as events. God will not send someone into your life so that the two of you have to sneak around. God loves to put His signature on what He approves, and sometimes He uses events and other people to confirm it. So don't be surprised when someone close to you or a complete stranger comes to say something to you regarding that someone and it agrees with everything God's already showing you. Please note that confirmations are not strange directions. Just like its name, it's meant to establish what God's already telling or showing you, not something you don't know. 
Then, eternal confirmations, on the other hand, refer to the spiritual activities that will occur to prove that this is God's work. This may involve prophecies, dreams, and visions of the two of you together as spouses. They may involve sharing similar spiritual and eternal values. I'll talk more about this in the next points. But these are the threefold confirmations you must see happening to prove that someone is approved and sent by God to be your spouse. 2. God's Word, the Holy Spirit, and the circumstances surrounding your relationship all align. What does God's Word say about your marital future? It says marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. It says that when the Holy Spirit comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will teach you what to do and how to go about it. Now, when God sends someone into your life as your spouse, your relationship will not contradict the Bible. For example, since the Bible says that we aren't to marry unbelievers, you cannot claim that someone is God sent when they're not even born again. The Holy Spirit will not ask you to marry an unbeliever because that would mean he'd be going against the Word of God, which is impossible. Jesus said in John 16, 13 to 15, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the father is mine. That is why I said the spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So when the word of God the Holy Spirit and the surrounding circumstances around you or the relationship are conflicting. Just know that God is not approving your union. Now, concerning surrounding circumstances, unless God makes a way for you two to be together, He won't send you someone who's living in a place you can't go. He won't give you someone who'll become a burden to you and your destiny. You should marry someone who you can see and be with, who you can watch and know more about and who can also see and know more about you. You should not marry someone who lives in a faraway country. You most likely don't even know who they are, what they like, what they do, and how they live. Again, I say, regarding surrounding circumstances, they will align with God's Word and the Holy Spirit, and they will not leave you in uncertainty, nor be a burden to you. 3. There will be spiritual, practical, and emotional alignment between you two. This agrees with and is similar to the first point about confirmations. However, this is the practical side of the confirmations. What do I mean? When God sends someone into your life to be your spouse, there will be spiritual, practical, and emotional alignment. This is what's referred to as compatibility. Spiritually, you'll both be able to connect on the same frequency. Being saved or unsaved is out of the picture now, as I believe I'm talking with Christians. The Bible says not to be unequally yoked. This means that whomever God approves for you will be a partner working side by side with you, not a project that you'll have to be working on while pursuing your destiny. When the person you're meant to marry becomes a project you're working on, it defeats the purpose of the union, as they aren't your partner. Does this mean you must be equal? No. Instead, it means that both of you share a spiritual compatibility. Your strengths complement their weaknesses and their strengths yours. You don't need a partner that you have to force or pray for them to go to church, read their Bible, or live as a Christian should. Practically, your relationship answers the question of partnership and possibilities. Do their lifestyle and choices agree with what God's showing you about your life? Will they be useful or helpful in your ministry? Are they mature mentally, socially, emotionally, and responsibly to be with you? When God sends someone to be your spouse, they'll check these boxes or be on their way to checking them. Lastly, emotional alignment. You'll admit to the connection you both share emotionally. You have to like the person you'll marry and have to grow in that love. If they're approved by God for you, you'll notice that your personalities and temperaments align. Your feelings will be mutual. They'll be as passionate about you as you are about them. There will be no question about assurance because there's alignment. 
These are very important elements that will confirm the person God is sending and approving as your partner. I encourage you to take them to heart and prayerfully trust God to work it out concerning you and whomever He sends your way.